we got these specimens from Clayton in 2007 and, and underwent the uh, basic uh, initial preparation of them. And I've prepared a lot of stuff in the Hell Creek. And uh, these two specimens were absolutely unreal to where we had to add glue to the matrix to slow down the preparation. It was going way too fast. And we had thought there may be skin or, or something really special preserved with them, which there ended up being. But uh, the condition of the fossil being so strong where it doesn't need any form of glue to remove the matrix. It uh, was one of the most amazing things to prepare as fast as it went and, um, and just such strong fossil. I got to do most of the work on the nano tyrannus and um, oh just I mean you're sitting in front of an entire skeleton and and the bones are black and the sand is tan and and uh, oh just as you're going along I mean you just you never really get get that kind of preparation where you have a whole skeleton as you're going you can just see this animal and uh, same with the ceratopsia and Katie got to work on the other side of the skull and and uh, most of the bones I normally prepare individual pieces and to sit down next to a skeleton with a microblaster and a toothbrush is uh, we'd stay out here nine, ten hours in a row and just, uh, oh, it was just amazing time for preparation, that's for sure. Well, uh, we found this dinosaur, you know, the, the sand around it was really loose and it was hard to tell exactly what was going on. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to do too much uh, prep out in the field or you can damage it. So we, we brushed it off best we could. And based on what we saw at the time, we could not see that it had any kind of horns. Uh, the right side of this skull was exposed to the surface. And uh, we could see that it was, you know, it was a ceratopsy and it had a beak and, and uh, we see frill. And uh, we didn't notice any kind of horns on this dinosaur at the time. And normally when you collect a triceratops skull, there's their uh, horn cores are very solid and uh, they have a unique texture and it's real, real easy to pick, you know, pick out a piece of horn from a piece of frill. Unlike this critter, when we flipped it over the last couple of days, we found that it does have a brow horn and, or two brow horns and uh, the texture is just way different than the normal typical triceratops, ceratopsy and brow horn. Uh, it's real rugose and, and just, just crazy. And uh, so, I'm, you know, that, that could be why we didn't recognize that there was horns uh, on this dinosaur when we found it. Uh, as you go with this deal, everything evolves. You know, we've, it's just been cool to, to watch the prep work the last couple days. Uh, certainly the most spectacular fossil I've got to work on. <laughs> it, uh, just, just everything about it is totally unusual to uh, any ceratopsian skull that I've worked on, for sure. It's been pretty cool the last couple days to watch this finally uh, become exposed for the first time ever and just see what unique features this uh, particular dinosaur is going to have. <laughs> it's changed a lot from what I thought it would look like. It, it's, it's more bizarre than I thought it would be, for sure. Uh, I didn't expect to see all the extra horns and the bumps and the, the craziness that's going on. Um, you know, I, I figured it would be just a, a basic uh, ceratopsian, more like protoceratops or, or uh, pachyrhinosaurus without quite this big a lump. You know, when we first found this, we, we thought it was Judith River formation, which was clarified later with Peter Larson had better maps and uh, more detailed maps, was able to tell that it was from the Hell Creek formation as opposed to Judith River. And of course, being Judith River, what we thought was a pachyrhinosaur, that seemed to be the closest match. There wasn't much, you know, on the surface for brow horns that we could see. It didn't look like it had horns. It did have kind of a bump on the nose, but it, it didn't look like a typical Prosis or Hiridus horn. Uh, and you know, today as we were prepping around the eye socket, we see a we see an eye horn, which is new and unique for the Hell Creek for sure. Uh, just just definitely changed today from what I thought it was going to be, but for the most part, it was a pretty dang cool change. This is October twenty eighth. We came up to. Fort Peck uh, a couple of days ago, and with uh, Clayton Phipps and uh, Chris Morrow and Katie Bush and uh, Dan Weisheidel, we were able to turn this 
uh, uh, the Ceratopsian skull over from the dueling dinosaurs. And man, is it cool. It's, it's, it's got so many features that tell us that clearly it is not Triceratops. It's not a normal Triceratops. One of the first things you notice about this specimen throughout, it has a very rugose texture, which probably indicates it's a very old individual. Um, this particular guy has, has six episquamosals, and it, here's where the, uh, the squamosal and parietal are separated by a suture. Uh, this epiocipital ends right here. The episquamosal ends right here. It does not cross over that border. It has one, unlike Triceratops, it has an extra epiocipital here, and, tricer where, uh, and, it, and it has only six total, including this one. Um, it has a very big uh, rugosity here at the epijugal, um, or the epijugal horn is, and actually the epijugal horn is almost a double horn here. Very interesting uh, morphology on this guy. Um, also, when we're looking at it, the premaxilla is very odd. It has what looks like a horn here on the side of the premaxilla, a very horny uh, excrescence, if you will. Um, there is an interesting little fenestra here. I don't know if that's due to a pathology or if uh, it actually has a fenestra on the other side. We're, uh, we're going to have to really go over the, the, in detail the, the photographs from the other side to see if we can see that same structure there. But it's, uh, there should not be. There should not be an opening here in this part of the premaxilla. Um, uh, it has uh, a little fenestra, premaxillary fenestra, like Triceratops. It also appears to have a, a relatively low uh, uh, nasal horn, um, somewhat like uh, Triceratops horridus. But uh, when you get back here by the orbit, you'll see it's very, very different than any Triceratops skull. It has, uh, on the jugal, it's got a very rugose orbit around the eye. And on the lacrimal, there's actually a lacrimal horn on front of the eye, which is something I've never seen on, on, on a Ceratopsian quite in this manner. And if you'll notice, the orbital horn itself is very low, it's very massive, but it's only about as tall as it is wide. Uh, very, very different from any Triceratops, any other of the Ceratopsians out of the Hell Creek. Um, interestingly, the texture on this horn is, is, is also very different than a typical horn. Uh, typically, you'd see very long uh, veins running through the horn where you'd have uh, probably feed, feeders for the keratinous sheath um, on this particular one. You don't have that. I'm, I'm just wondering if that uh, horn core was actually covered with skin rather than a keratinous sheath. And probably the most exciting thing that we found in this last couple of days is what you're looking at here. This patch is a patch of skin. It has big polygons like uh, you'll see on the back of Triceratops, on the flank of Triceratops, and actually on the flank of this beast as well. Uh, very, very cool to see skin on this. There's been a, uh, somewhat of a debate as to whether or not the frills were covered with skin or whether they were covered with a keratinous sheath like we believe the horns were covered. Um, in this case, we can certainly say there was no keratinous sheath. This is skin. Anyway, certainly the coolest fossil that I've ever prepared helped to, be pre uh, helped to prepare. Uh, it, it prepares just beautifully, as you can see, just in a few days now, we were able to, to clean this surface. There's, of course, a lot of work left to do, and we want to save this skin and see if we can't uh, uncover some more skin here, too, to, to try to get a better idea on what the actual surface of this dinosaur looked, uh, how it looked when it was alive.